Ikhus, isn't poverty suffering in the world for one who enjoys sensual pleasures? Yes, Banti. If a poor, destitute, indigent person gets into debt, isn't his indebtedness, too, suffering in the world for one who enjoys sensual pleasures? Yes, Banti. If a poor, destitute, indigent person who has gotten into debt promises to pay interest, isn't the interest, too, suffering in the world for one who enjoys sensual pleasures? Yes, Banti. If a poor, destitute, indigent person who has promised to pay interest cannot pay it when it falls due, they reprove him. Isn't being reproved, too, suffering in the world for one who enjoys sensual pleasures? Yes, Banti. If a poor, destitute, indigent person who is reproved does not pay, they prosecute him. Isn't prosecution, too, suffering in the world for one who enjoys sensual pleasures? Yes, Banti. If a poor, destitute, indigent person who is prosecuted does not pay, they imprison HFM. Isn't imprisonment, too, suffering in the world for one who enjoys sensual pleasures? Yes, Banti. So, Hikhus, for one who enjoys sensual pleasures, poverty is suffering in the world. Getting into debt is suffering in the world. Having to pay interest is suffering in the world. Being reproved is suffering in the world. Prosecution is suffering in the world. And imprisonment is suffering in the world. So too. Hikhus. When one does not have faith in cultivating beneficial qualities. When one does not have a sense of moral shame in cultivating beneficial qualities. When one does not have moral dread in cultivating beneficial qualities. When one does not have energy in cultivating beneficial qualities. When one does not have punna in cultivating beneficial qualities, in the noble one's discipline one is called a poor, destitute, indigent person. Having no faith. No sense of moral shame, no moral dread, no energy, no punna in cultivating beneficial qualities, that poor, destitute, indigent person engages in misconduct by body, speech, and mind. This, I say, is his getting into debt. To conceal his bodily misconduct, he nurtures an evil desire. He wishes. Let no one know me. He intends with the aim. Let no one know me. He utters statements with the aim. Let no one know me. He makes bodily endeavors with the aim. Let no one know me. To conceal his verbal misconduct. To conceal his mental misconduct, he nurtures an evil desire. He wishes. Let no one know me. He intends with the aim. Let no one know me. He utters statements with the aim. Let no one know me. He makes bodily endeavors with the aim. Let no one know me. This, I say, is the interest he must pay. Well-behaved fellow monks speak thus about him. This venerable one acts in such a way, behaves in such a way. This, I say, is his being reproved. When he has gone to the forest, to the foot of a tree, or to an empty dwelling, bad harmful thoughts accompanied by remorse assail him. This, I say, is his prosecution. Then, with the breakup of the body, after death, that poor, destitute, indigent person who engaged in misconduct by body, speech, and mind is bound in the prison of hell or the prison of the animal realm. I do not see. Pick us any other prison that is as terrible and harsh, and such an obstacle to attaining the unsurpassed security from bondage, as the prison of hell or the prison of the animal realm. Poverty is called suffering in the world. So too is getting into debt. A poor person who becomes indebted is troubled while enjoying himself. Then they prosecute him. And he also incurs imprisonment. This imprisonment is indeed suffering. For one yearning for gain and sensual pleasures. Just so in the noble one's discipline. One in whom faith is lacking. Who is shameless and brash. Heaps up a mass of evil kama. Having engaged in misconduct. By body, speech, and mind. He forms the wish. May no one find out about me. He twists around with his body. By speech or mind. 
he piles up his evil deeds. In one way or another, repeatedly. This unwise evildoer, knowing his own misdeeds, is a poor person who falls into debt, troubled while enjoying himself. His thoughts then prosecute him. Painful mental states born of remorse, whether in the village or the forest. This unwise evildoer, knowing his own misdeeds, goes to a certain animal realm, or is even bound in hell. This indeed is the suffering of bondage, from which the wise person is freed, giving gifts with wealth righteously gained, settling his mind in confidence. The householder endowed with faith, has made a lucky throw in both cases, for his welfare in this present life, and happiness in future lives. Thus it is that for home dwellers, this merit increases through generosity. Just so, in the noble one's discipline, one whose faith is firm, who is endowed with shame, dreading wrong, wise and restrained by virtuous behavior, is said to live happily. In the noble one's discipline, having gained spiritual happiness, one then resolves on indifference, having abandoned the five hindrances, always arousing energy. He enters upon the yanas, unified, alert, and mindful, having known things thus as they really are. Through complete non-clinging, the mind is rightly liberated, with the destruction of all fetters, with the destruction of the fetters of existence. For the stable one, rightly liberated, the knowledge occurs. My liberation is unshakable. This is the supreme knowledge. This is unsurpassed happiness. Sorrowless, dust-free, and secure. This is the highest freedom from debt. Mahakanda. Thus have I heard. On one occasion the venerable Mahakanda was dwelling among the Setis at Sahajati. There he addressed the Bhikkhus. Friends, Bhikkhus. Friend. Those Bhikkhus replied. The venerable Mahakanda said this. Here, friends, Bhikkhus who are Dhamma yogis disparage those Bhikkhus who are meditators, saying. They meditate and cogitate, claiming. We are meditators, we are meditators. Why do they meditate? In what way do they meditate? How do they meditate? In this case, the bhikkhus who are Dhamma yogis aren't pleased. And the bhikkhus who are meditators aren't pleased. And they aren't practicing for the welfare of many people, for the happiness of many people, for the good, welfare, and happiness of many people, of devas, and human beings. But the meditating bhikkhus disparage the bhikkhus who are Dhamma yogis, saying. They are restless, puffed up, vain talkative, rambling in their talk, muddle-minded, lacking complete comprehension, unconcentrated, with wandering minds, with loose sense faculties, claiming. We are Dhamma Yogis, we are Dhamma Yogis. Why are they Dhamma Yogis? In what way are they Dhamma Yogis? How are they Dhamma Yogis? In this case, the meditators aren't pleased. And the Dhamma Yogis aren't pleased and they aren't practicing for the welfare of many people, for tire happiness of many people, for the good, welfare, and happiness of many people, of devas, and human beings. Friends, the bhikkhus who are Dhamma yogis praise only bhikkhus who are Dhamma yogis, not those who are meditators. In this case, the bhikkhus who are Dhamma specialists aren't pleased, and those who are meditators aren't pleased and they aren't practicing for the welfare of many people, for the happiness of many people, for the good, welfare, and happiness of many people, of devas, and human beings. But the bhikkhus who are meditators praise only bhikkhus who are also meditators, not those who are dhamma spechalists. In this case, the bhikkhus who are meditators aren't pleased, and those who are dhamma yogis aren't pleased and they aren't practicing for the welfare of many people, for the happiness of many people, for the good, welfare, and happiness of many people, of devas, and human beings. Therefore, friends, you should train yourselves thus. Those of us who are Dhamma Yogis will praise those bhikkhus who are meditators. 
thus should you train yourselves. For what reason? Because, friends, these persons are astounding and rare in the world who dwell having touched the deathless element with the body. Therefore, friends, you should train yourselves thus. Those of us who are meditators will praise those bhikkhus who are dhamma yogis. Thus should you train yourselves. For what reason? Because, friends, these persons are astounding and rare in the world who see a deep and pithy matter after piercing it through with punna. Directly visible. Then the ascetic Maliya Sivaka approached the Lord and exchanged greetings with him. When they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk, he sat down to one side and said to the Lord. Banti, it is said. The directly visible Dhamma. The directly visible Dhamma. In what way, Banti? Is the Dhamma directly visible, immediate, inviting one to come and see, applicable, to be personally experienced by the wise? Well then, Sivaka, I will question you in turn about this. Answer as you see fit. What do you think, Sivaka? When there is greed within you, do you know? There is greed within me, and when there is no greed within you, do you know? There is no greed within me? Yes, Banti. Since, Sivaka, when there is greed within you, you know. There is greed within me and when there is no greed within you, you know. There is no greed within me, in this way the Dhamma is directly visible, immediate, inviting one to come and see, applicable, to be personally experienced by the wise. What do you think, Sivaka? When there is hatred within you. Delusion within you. A state connected with greed within you. A state connected with hatred within you. A state connected with delusion within you, do you know? There is a state connected with delusion within me, and when there is no state connected with delusion within you, do you know? There is no state connected with delusion within me? Yes, Banti. Since, Sivaka, when there is a state connected with delusion within you, you know. There is a state connected with delusion within me and when there is no state connected with delusion within you, you know. There is no state connected with delusion within me in this way the Dhamma is directly visible, immediate, inviting one to come and see, applicable, to be personally experienced by the wise. Excellent, Banti. As it. Let the Lord consider me a lay. Follower who from today has gone for refuge for life.